In the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Is this referring to the Catholic Church? Or is this referring referring to the Orthodox Church? No. This is not referring to any of those groups. This is referring to the first century true Bible-believing Christians who preached the gospel the way Jesus taught them to preach it. The statement to the Catholic Church, the one true church, I have a problem with that. Yet a lot of people do it. It annoys people who think that it means, you know, we're right, everybody else is wrong. But that really isn't the Catholic view. We would say that the Catholic Church has the fullness of truth. We have all the gifts that Christ wanted to give his people. It doesn't mean for a second there aren't many other gifts that are distributed all over the place. In other Christian religions, in the Jewish religion, in the Hindu, Muslim, uh, Buddhist religions, those can be reflective of the fullness of truth that you can find in Catholicism. So Vatican II, for example, said that non-Christians can be saved. Even people, uh, even atheists of goodwill can be saved. Someone who's following his or her conscience sincerely and honestly can be saved. Now, it doesn't mean, well, aren't we all the same now? It means the Catholic Church has the, the fullness of what God wanted to reveal to his people. And so we have all the gifts that make salvation uh, available to us. But there are participations in this truth all over the place. It's not simply right and wrong. It's fullness versus varying degrees of participation. That's a better way to put it. Hi, I am Approved of God, and here on my channel, we try to teach the truth of God's Word. We don't believe in adding or taking away from Scripture. And so this has led us down a narrow path where we instruct and teach Christians to follow the, the way of Christ, his teachings, his doctrines, and of course, the doctrine of the apostles, because it was the apostles who followed after Christ and continued with the legacy of preaching the everlasting gospel. Someone asked me, uh, uh, you know, they texted me or commented and said, what in the heck is the everlasting gospel? And I told him, the everlasting gospel is the true gospel of Jesus Christ of the first century. It's called the everlasting gospel in Revelation because the gospel of Jesus Christ does not change. It is only evil men who have changed the gospel and added onto the gospel their ways, their traditions, their own doctrines. For those who are orthodox, there are two fundamental things that you have to accept. The first is Christ only made one church. And if you're an Orthodox Christian, you have already come to the proper conclusion that Christ is God and that you believe in the Holy Trinity. The other fundamental aspect that everybody must understand and believe is that heresy or in communion with heresy cuts one off from the church, from Christ. Heresy, which is a wrong belief, or to be in communion with heresy will cut someone off from Christ. So those two things someone has to understand and accept. Christ only made one church and heresy cuts one off from Christ. 
It is written in the words of the Apostle Paul that the gospel does not change. That there is no two gospels or three gospels. There is only one gospel that was delivered unto the saints according to Jude. A one gospel that was delivered unto the saints so that we or they might contend for the faith. And those of us who believe this one gospel, single gospel of the first century, will find ourselves contending for the faith all the time. There are many today who are saying that the Catholic Church is a true and original church. Others, not wanting to be Catholic, go the, the way of the Orthodox Church, Eastern Orthodox. And they're teaching that they are the original true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I have news for you. The reason I'm doing this video is for those simple-minded people who are seeking for the truth. And the truth is not found in the Catholic Church or the Orthodox Church. The truth is found in the New Testament Church, the local New Testament Church, that follows the, the Word of God, and especially the New Testament, with the words of Jesus Christ in red. The true Church of the Lord Jesus Christ are those who follow His teachings, that thus being called Christians. A Christian is a follower of Christ, not someone who adopts the name, but someone who follows the very teachings of Christ and the apostles. This is very important for today. If you want to find yourself in the truth, you have to go to Scripture. And the Word of God, the Bible, teaches us that Jesus taught very direct doctrines, and we are to follow them. He even compared us, he said that if any man hear his words and doeth them not, he compares him to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And you know that anything built upon the sand is going to fall, especially when there's, there's winds and floods and, and hurricanes or whatever, it's going to fall. So Jesus taught that the wise men will hear his words and do them. This is who we are. We are Christians who follow the words of Jesus Christ. We don't add or take away because that would change the gospel. And that's exactly what happened in the second century. Some men crept into the church and some men that were already in the church started teaching their own ideas, their own doctrines. You can find this already in the New Testament. Even the Apostle John was not allowed to go into a certain church because the man that was heading the church, he took over and he did not want anyone to interfere with his thoughts and ideas. So the Bible teaches us that even when the apostles were still alive, there were already people were standing up and teaching false doctrine within the church. And the Bible teaches us clearly, Paul said that after his departure, grievous wolves will come in and they would not spare the flock. And they would teach false doctrines and, and all kinds of things, heresies. And that is what has happened. And so now in our time, we have to discern and we have to research and find out who the true believers are. And I will tell you now, there is not one denomination that is a true original denomination or religion of the early church. But you will find that local churches, if they teach the word of God and they teach the doctrines and teachings of Jesus Christ, then you will know that they are biblical Christians and if they follow the word of God and obey it, that's who you follow, that's who you join. You join a fellowship of Christians who preach the word of God, who read the Bible and adhere to the teachings and the dogmas that are within the word of God and not outside. You see, Catholics and Orthodox or those men who came into the church and introduced their own doctrines and beliefs. And with this came also the, the idolatry and the, the, the using of statues, religious statues, and the Orthodox using icons. And the or early church did not use any of that. If you follow the New Testament church, especially the book of Acts, and then follow with the epistles of the apostles, you will see what they believed. And they did not believe in the doctrines that the Catholic church upholds to this day. And as a matter of fact, the, the Catholic Church points to the Apostolic Fathers. But if you study the Apostolic Fathers, the Antinicene Fathers, you will see that they were in the 2nd century onward.
but they also introduced new doctrines and beliefs. Including the earliest apostolic fathers, uh, they started teaching things that the apostles never taught. And, and I can go down the line and, and show you uh, what these men did. Uh, but Clement of Rome, for example, started teaching the, the disciples that they were following or they were uh, predecessors to the apostles. And, and, and they go on to, to mention the, the people who they say came after the apostles. But if they did, my question to you, if they did follow the apostles, how come they didn't teach the same doctrines as the apostles? And when you come down to another early father, Ignatius of Antioch, he introduces doctrines that are way off, way out of line. For example, the perpetual virginity of Mary. Uh, for example, talking about a Eucharist, talking about this and that. Of course, we know, those of us who have researched, know that the, the writings of the Apostolic and anti Nicene Fathers, the writings have been interpolated. So many of these writings, someone has placed their ideas into the writings of Ignatius and Clement and Justin Martyr and so forth. They've injected their own ideas through the years. So the writings of the Apostolic and anti Nicene Fathers are corrupted. They're not original. Men have placed their ideas into it and have made it look like something else. But I use their writings to teach you that you cannot trust them. Because the only ones we can trust are the apostles of the first century, the apostles who followed and, and, and died for the gospel. And the, their followers were always staying within the scriptures. And so if you want to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, you have to stay within the Bible, within the scriptures. You cannot allow yourself to add or take away. Oh, what about this tradition? What about this doctrine that, okay, it does, you don't see it in the, in the New Testament, but it came in the third century or fourth century. Should we follow that? The answer is no. You're being misled by men who do not understand or who willingly disobey the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, is unique and you must follow the words of Jesus Christ and the teachings of the apostles. The Bible says that the, the church is founded on the foundation of the apostles and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So, and, and it says in Corinthians that no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So, you have clear scripture that teach that we stay with the gospel of the first century. And men will try to change it by using other Bible translations, but they can only go so far. Because Jesus promised that heaven and earth would pass away, but his words would not pass away. So we will continue with the word of God to the very end. And we will be persecuted for the word of God, because evil men will see that they cannot move us, they cannot change us, they cannot make us follow their false ideas, their false idolatry, their false uh, mother of God, their false teachings on all these things. They cannot do it. Why? Because we stand on the Word of God alone. And we follow it. And we follow history. We follow what happened in the first century, and the second century, and the third century. I want my viewers to understand this. There is a lot of deception going on in the world. And a lot of people are teaching you that if you follow them, you're in the true church. Or you're following the true doctrine. And I'm setting it straight today. And you can quote me. You can follow my, my videos. We stick to the Word of God. In other words, teaches it, we teach it. Not one verse only. We use many verses to develop a doctrine. When you put all these verses together, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4, 4. We follow, we, just like the Protestant Reformation, they said that scripture interprets scripture. We're not going to go by one simple verse and teach you a whole doctrine from there. That is error, and that is one of the ways that they're deceiving you. No, we follow the word of God. We, we go line upon line, uh, here a little, there a little verse upon verse, principle upon principle. We put it together 
and what the Bible teaches is that's what we accept, we receive, and we obey.